In all narcissism, we tend to see a lack of empathy, grandiosity, entitlement, superficiality, chronic seeking of validation outside of them, uh, arrogance, and a real tendency towards rage, as well as a tendency to manipulate or exploit other people. Those you tend to see across the board to varying degrees. So let's start at the top with what I consider the most severe and problematic narcissistic pattern, and that's the malignant or the toxic narcissist. These are the folks that almost look like psychopaths. They are, they'll exploit other people, they take advantage of other people, they lie, they cheat, they, um, they work the system to their advantage, they can often be quite successful. You might wonder, why am I not calling them psychopaths? They can sometimes feel remorse for what they're doing. I'm like, this isn't cool, but I just got, I just got to get this part done and I'll make it right. Mm -hmm. Whereas a psychopath wouldn't need to make it right. So there's just a really manipulative, mean-spirited edge to them that can be very unsettling. But, but when you first meet them, they're extraordinarily charming, extraordinarily charismatic. Um, confident, successful. So that's sort of your malignant, toxic type. You'll often see these folks running big companies, you know, at, in the, at the heads of government, all of that. Like they, ha they really know how to work a system. Wow. The next in the, in the group is what I call sort of your classical grandiose narcissist. And that's what most of us think of. Mm -hmm. The person who's braggy, who really is entitled, I'm special, I deserve special treatment. It's almost like your celebrity Head narcissist. That's what your grandiose narcissist, they brag a lot, they show off a lot, look at my new car, look at my new this, look at my new girlfriend. It's a lot of show and tell. They suck all the oxygen out of the room all the usual traits, but they don't tend to be as exploitative and as mean as a malignant narcissist, but they are sort of your classical kind of narcissist. The next narcissist on the list, and this is probably the most mysterious one, is the covert or vulnerable narcissist. These are the woe is me narcissist. You know, if the world could see how great I am, I'd be one of the great ones, but nobody gets me because I'm ahead of my time. And so they'll, you'll often find them sort of at home huddled over their computer being like a troll or like coming up with their next big plan, but they almost have a failure to launch a lot of the time. They can often look depressed. There's a real, they seem vulnerable because they almost feel like the world doesn't get them. They're hyper, hypersensitive to criticism, um, but they lack empathy and they can be very entitled. Like, I deserve special treatment because, you know, the world doesn't know this, but I'm the best. The covert narcissists, they lead with that, but it looks like, it's almost like they, they feel like they're, they have this sort of strange, I always say that the covert narcissist has this sort of weird pause. They'll say, yeah, I went to that college, but I guess nobody cares. And they'll do that weird thing, you know, like, okay, well, that's a little bit of a strange pause, but it's a, they're like, yeah, I, I already read that book, but why would you care? You know, it's like one of those, <laughs> it's like, wow, it's a little bit, there's, a, there's an edge. It's almost like you're sticking your hand into a bucket of barbed wire. It doesn't feel good. The covert narcissist, though, ultimately will get to the point where they feel the world owes them something. Mm. The world owes me. And there'll be a real edge to them, you know, because they, but it is, they seem really sad and you'll often try to help them and you'll wonder why they're so ungrateful. Well, That's why that can feel really uncomfortable for other people who are so sympathetic to them and wonder why are they not ever saying thank you or recognizing yeah. all we did. Yeah. Now, number four is the communal narcissist. The communal narcissist can be very confusing because they're out there volunteering and flying all over the world and doing their own personal rescue missions. And, you know, after every hurricane, they're posting online hurricane goals, hashtag hurricane goals. And like, let's all raise enough money and let's send lots of stuff down. They're the hashtag narcissist. They're the hashtag narcissist. Yeah. But they're, like, it's all about their their goals for helping the world. And and like, you'll see them. I mean, you're an, you know about animal rescue people. Like, they're always holding their rescue dogs, but then they go home and they're really mean to their husband. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. they love going to galas and they want buildings named after them. And if they do give a donation, they have to hold 20 gold shovels and have lots of pictures taken. Like it's all about the, they do all these things to get validation. That's their tool for getting validation. They're often really unkind 
to the people, they, their, their immediate family, or the people who work under them. They can be absolutely awful to them. And people say, oh my gosh, you're so lucky you work with him. He's so charitable. And the people are just like, oh no, this is really That's one of nice. many characteristics he is. So, so the communal narcissist is a very, it's a, it takes a while to sort of un, to peel off that layer. And then to sort of, that's why I always say, pay attention to how a person treats the person who don't have as much power as them in that situation, because mm. that's going to teach you a lot. So they'll be really sweet to the recipient of the charitable dollars, but really mean to the person who's working with them. And yeah. that doesn't add up. The last narcissist is sort of kind of a good nature. I'm going to call them the benign narcissist. The benign narcissist is like this sort of clueless, uninsightful person who just says really vapid things, very superficial, only cares like, all I want is like a fast car and you know, you're driving a piece of junk. Like they'll be very dismissive other people. This sounds like every 16 year old I've it, ever in met. In many ways, if there's an adolescence, there's an immaturity, but they really aren't that mean spirited. And you can actually kind of say, that's not a nice thing to say. And they're like, well, yeah, I guess so. But then they'll go back and say it the next day. I always say it's nice to have a few benign narcissists on deck because they're fun to have at a party. <laughs> you know, like just keep them on that list, but never turn to them at a time of need. 